Right. Okay. Good morning. We are uh, now on recording mode, and today's assignment is, uh, or rather, our two uh, things together taken together. One is uh, letter writing, and the other is uh, email writing and email as part of communication. Right. So I will straight away move on to uh, the structure of the formal letter. Right, and this I've taken from the NCRT uh, textbook, which uh, provides us with a basic and rudimentary structure about what uh, formal letter writing is all about. Now, uh, please remember that when you write a letter, you have a clear purpose. I mean, say an official letter is written with a particular uh, intent in mind, right? So. Let's take one small example, uh, which I will use for you. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I should have uh, started presenting uh, my uh, screen. But let me do that uh, uh, right now, so that you can take a look at what I am presenting on screen. Uh, can you see my screen uh, now? Is it visible? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Well, Fine, fine. Thank you. Uh, now, the purpose of the letter. So this is uh, an email which is being sent because of, I had applied from my email for my daughter's admission to CLAT. And it is uh, fundamentally an email which is telling me uh, that, you know, what is the date and time of the CLAT examination? So it says, dear candidate, your reporting time for CLAT uh, is on this date and at that time, right? And it must be very clear. You see, an official email will not be long. You do not need any flourishes of any language here. You are meant only to communicate the most important information. So that's the information that is conveyed. Please report to the exam venue only on the given time, and so on and so forth. And you have uh, a statutory warning. Many emails are generic emails in the sense you do not need to reply to them. Right. You see, uh, this is the person who has sent the email. Uh, the date, of course, in the email you do not need to give because the email will have its date itself. But in the business letter on the right hand side or on the left hand side, I will uh, tell you about that. You need to provide the date. Now, this is the two. The whom the email is addressed. Underneath, you will have two other columns, CC, that is carbon copy, uh, which say you are writing to me with a copy to Topuda. So the primary recipient is to Amrit Shen, and the CC is to Topu Bishash at whatever email address Topu has. Now, very often, please remember that you also want to send a copy of this email to both of us and to another person without letting us know that you have sent a copy of the email to him, right? Then there's a column in the email which says BCC. This is blind carbon copy, right? So supposing you, the CLAT team wants to send this to me with a copy to Topuda and with a copy to one of you, without letting us know that they want to communicate the, uh, the fact that they've sent this mail to us, then you use the BCC. When do we use a BCC? Supposing you are working in an institution, or let us say you are a student. You have sent a letter complaining about, one, say, one of your teachers to the vice chancellor. You have sent it also to the head of the department, to CC. And you also have sent it to one of your friends whom you are informing him that you are sending it, but you don't want the vice chancellor or the head of the department concerned to know that you have sent this mail to your friend. So then you will use the BCC. Now, the BCC is generally not used in general emails. It is used only in office. So supposing I have sent a mail to Mr. X. I have sent the copy to Mr. Y 
and i also want mr z to know that i have sent it to them without mr x or y knowing it it is then that i will use the bcc but please remember this right okay one or two points that i want to uh, suggest to you about using email you see email is it can be of course intimate and uh, personal communication there's no doubt about that but when you use official correspondence do not use fancy fonts do not use very large sizes of fonts because all of these you are now writing on uh, you are hardly writing on pen and paper you are writing on the computer tablet or mobile whatever it is the standard format to be used is times new roman or whatever your email provider provides or garamond these are two very important fonts and the size of the font should always be approximately around 12 right so that is the structure of the email right now the purpose of the formal letter right or the formal email should be very clear to you right the second is the person to whom it is addressed right so whoever you are addressing to say i am writing to the registrar asking for leave so i write this to the registrar vishu uh, bharati shanti niketan you are uh, writing to say uh, the ex book agency about inquiring about a book so to comma if you want comma if you do not want you see these are two distinctly different traditions one was the british tradition which believed in the comma and which talked about yours sincerely on the right hand side nowadays we do not use that format anymore all letters are written with left alignment from the left hand side so everything is on the left you need not have any complications there right so to mr x uh, krishna book agency x calcutta street kolkata 25 and then you have the address or the salutation it's this is very important do you use sir or do you use dear sir when it is very very formal use sir please remember nowadays a lot of correspondence is also directed towards women so you do not know whether the person you are sending this to is a man or a woman so you begin by saying madam slash sir when you know the person or when you are in a, with a degree of form, uh, informality or a degree of uh, uh, what you can call knowledge of the person when you know her or him you will address dear madam sir and if you specifically are in conversation with that person you know him, her or him very nicely say dear professor said or dear amrit da right so only and only when you are familiar with the person will you use the specifically the uh, the name of the individual right but the standard format to use is dear madam slash sir that should be uh, the uh, proper format for your letter that's what i call the salutation right uh, now the next thing is the tone that you should adopt right so the tone that you should adopt uh, you will you must remember that you know uh letters have various purposes so i'm showing you a few kinds of formal letters and emails which uh, of course you will understand what the tone is this for example was a letter written on a perfectly neutral tone right this is just an informative email or a business letter now this for example is again another informal letter but here since the purpose is to ask me to evaluate the thesis of a particular candidate right therefore the controller you see has written is respecting me is providing me with respect you can say i am honored i am pleased i have great pleasure in informing you 
that our university has nominated you as an examiner of the following doctoral thesis. Say, but you will not say, I am greatly pleased to apply to your uh, vacancy. No, when you apply for a vacancy, you will suggest that I have been informed that your company is looking for X and Y position. It is a privilege for me to apply here, right? So I have great pleasure in informing you that that is why that the tone can be of respect. Say, this is another email that I wrote. And this is a letter of complaint where the tone you will find is much more direct and harsh, right? So this many of you have encountered your mobile data pack has been activated, which you do not want. So I am stating the purpose clearly, right? Dear sir, this is to bring to your attention the unethical. So at the very beginning, I am using the tone of the complaint, the unethical and recurrent practice of deducting money from my account with phone number this. Periodically, there have been messages informing me. So you see what I've done is I have divided this clearly into paragraphs. So the statement, then the paragraph says, periodically, there have been messages informing me that a certain pack has been activated on my account, even when I have done nothing of that kind. On calling, the amount was reverted back to my account, right? So this happens with all of you also. So this is a tone of complaint. This was information with a tone of respect, right? So uh, these are things that you must remember. So what the tone of the letter will be, right? Now, let me carry on with this particular letter because this is uh, something which you might have to do later on. Yesterday, the, suddenly there was a message informing me that at that much amount had been deducted as a fashion pack. Yeah, on calling, your representative told me that the pack could be deactivated, but the amount could not be refunded. So I am protesting. So I say I strongly protest this and would like to ask how a third party app can deduct money without my permission from my account balance with you. Right. So this is your protest. This is the a separate paragraph. And then what is your demand? See, my letter is stating that this is the problem. This is my response. I am protesting and this is my demand. So therefore, the demand is in another, you know, uh, paragraph. I demand that such a pound be amount be refunded to my account. And this practice of deleting money from my account be immediately stopped, right? And I finally want to complain about the behavior of the employee. Say, I am saying, lastly, that response of uh, Rajnandini Roy was cold and non-understanding. And then I write a concluding line also. This has to be written, right? I hope you will take cognizance of this compliant, stop these practices, and revert the amount. And then you, I sign off by saying, thanking you, yours sincerely, this, right? So this is the structure of the, uh, uh, the, the letter, right? This is the structure of the letter. See, you see this gentleman when he's writing to me has said, I'm sending you this thesis. I shall be most grateful if you could kindly let me have your willingness. So. He's now stated what he, why he wants to write the letter to me, purpose, and then what feedback or what action does he expect me to fulfill? He says, uh, I shall be most grateful if you could kindly let me have your willingness for examining the thesis, right? And then uh, he tells me about the remuneration and he signs off, right? So this is another letter of information asking me or another letter requesting something. This was only a letter informing me. This is a letter informing and seeking a response. This is a letter particularly complaining and seeking a response. And lastly, here is a letter which is appreciating. So this is a letter of appreciation. And you see, note the tone. It is one of 
total respect. We convey our sincerest thanks and deepest gratitude for accepting our invitation and delivering such a wonderful and thought provoking letter and whatever and so on and forth. We are impressed by your lecture and we are optimistic that the students, teachers and academicians would immensely be benefited by the lecture. By the way, this is a common error which I am sort of highlighting. We are very much impressed. This is a particularly Bengali way of uh, making an error. You should never write this. We are impressed is fine. We are very impressed is also fine. Never use. We are very much grateful. We are very much impressed. That is an error in English, right? And then they say this is for your kind information that the lecture will be available here and here. So thanking you and they have signed off both of them. Right. Let me get back to the structure of the form. So I have given you one. The. Absolutely informative letter two, a letter informing and asking for some feedback. Three, a letter of complaint. Four, a letter of appreciation. And finally, I will also show you something which will interest you, but that is at the end of this discussion. Now, therefore, you must remember the tone of communication that the letter uses. Your letter must be complete, right? It must have different sections. Say, for example, section one talks about why the letter is written. So I am writing this to thank you. I am writing this to appreciate you. I am writing this to let you know. Right. Then if you require any feedback, right. Say, let me give you another letter. For example, say if this letter was given to me about examinership, then there could be also a letter which was asking, which was reminding me that I have not submitted the report. So it will say, dear sir, this is to remind you about our correspondence or our email dated X on the above topic. You are request. You are reminded. You are politely reminded to uh, revert back to us with the report immediately. So this is a letter of reminder that you can also have right. Now, what happens when you respond to a job offer, right? Say, let us let us uh, take three letters about jobs, because these are letters which you will uh, have to write sometime later on. So first letter would be for applying for a particular job, right? Now, you can, of course. Oh, OK, let me finish this first. So you it the letter must be complete. You must clearly state what you want. What is the action required? This is the feedback. So I was requested to send this thesis back to them by this date. And very importantly, a letter should be concise. Do not use adjectives unnecessarily. Do not write. I am so grateful that you are a great scholar and you have taken on the trouble no requirement at all. You must be very crisp, very concise in writing this letter. Right. So dear sir, madam is written when we are writing to a total stranger whom we do not know at all. Right. Dear professor or dear Dr. Sina is written when it is a formal relationship, but the writer does not know him or her personally. But if somebody writes to me saying, dear Omrit, then the writer must know me personally and the two share a semi formal relationship. So this is clear. Dear sir, madam, when we are writing to a total stranger whom we do not know at all, dear Professor Sen, when it is a formal relationship with the addressee and the writer does not know him or her personally, and when they know me personally, but and it is a semi formal relationship, say Topu is addressing me, dear Amrita, then it is, uh, it is, dear, 
you can use the mail address. Right. Now, reference to previous correspondence, if any, with reference to your advertisement in the Telegraph. I have come across your advertisement in the Telegraph dated for the post of a copy editor. Right. So most official letters carry a subject line. You see, this is the subject line letter of appreciation. This is the subject line. You know, uh, here it is not given because it is an email. Very often this uh, email uh, will have the subject actually here. Right. You can see this complaint about unjust deduction, examinership to value PhD thesis in the email. This is the subject matter. You will have a separate box altogether. Right. And so subject, then the content of the letter, then the complimentary close and signature. Right. Thanking you is generally mandatory. You should thank the English language uses three very important words. Sorry. Thank you. And they also use this uh, salutation, hi or hello, whatever. Right. So uh, thanking you is politeness. It shows your politeness. So thanking you. Now the question is, how should you close this? Now, you can close this in two ways. The first is saying yours truly or yours faithfully, right? People whom you do not address specifically by name, dear sir, is always to be closed with yours truly or yours faithfully. Yours truly is the American way. Yours faithfully is the British way. Now, you can also, if you use dear Professor X, when you have named a person, you should close it with yours sincerely, right? Yours sincerely. Now, when you are writing to your professor or your headmaster, you can also close with yours obediently, right? Yours obediently. But this is only to your teacher. Otherwise, you do not write yours obediently. Even now, our students write with yours truly, yours sincerely. And very often, we have now changed the salutation with warm regards, with kind regards, so with warm wishes, right? Very often, people also sign off saying best. Now, that is not a formal signing off. That is informal. If you have to sign a formal letter off, you write with best wishes, with warm regards, right? You or better in official correspondence, you write yours truly. Or if you are naming a person, dear Mr. Sinha, yours sincerely or sincerely yours. Yours sincerely or sincerely yours. Now, here is an interesting letter. This I wanted you to read. This is a letter which was written by Barack Obama to a young lady. Right. And he's writing this. He's saying, dear Sophia. So he's named the person and he says, thank you for writing me such a thoughtful letter about your family. So it's a young girl reading. It made me proud to be your president and even more hopeful about the future of our nation. Right. Your differences unite us. You and I are blessed to live in a country where we are born equal, no matter what we look on the outside, where we grow up or where our parents are. Now, that is true also about our country. And this is a matter of great pride to her, us. And he's signing off, you see. Thanks again for writing the time to me. So this young girl had written to him. And he says, I'm honored to have your support and inspired by your compassion. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to dinner. So she had obviously invited him to dinner. So but Obama says, no, I, I'm sorry I can't make it to dinner. But I'll be sure to tell Sasha and Mah Malia to say, you say hello. So these are his two daughters. And he has signed off saying sincerely because he has addressed this girl as dear Sophia. Right. So 
this is a formal letter which is being written, a semi-formal letter really, by a US president to a young girl. But you see how polite and how interesting the tone is. Remember that you will not be polite only and only when you are complaining. Supposing you are complaining that the book has not delivered and you say kindly please send me the book. You will not say I demand that the book. You will say that I demand that the book be sent to me at the earliest. It is imperative that you send the book to me at the earliest. It is urgent that you uh, send it to me immediately. Remember any letter will with any urgency or email with any urgency will say kindly treat the matter as urgent, right? Kindly treat the matter as urgent. Very often letters in organizations through all will also be through proper channel, right? Through proper channel means that you are sending the letter, say to the vice chancellor through your head and your principal. So in an office, there will be a hierarchy and you will have to follow this hierarchy. Remember that, right? So this is what the formal letters structure is uh, uh, more or less about. Now, there are two or three things which I would, this is for example, uh, an outline. So whoever is sending, then the date. Now the date, you can also write in a formal letter underneath your signing off. Say yours truly, Amrit Shen, and then I put the letter. That, and then I put the date, sorry. That is also permissible. This is the CBSC format. For those of you who have studied the CBSC structure, you can also write the date on top of the letter. And this is a totally left aligned letter. Now, if you've seen this, you remember, Obama is using the right indent when he's written sincerely, right? You can do that also, yours sincerely, comma, uh, X, Y, Z, right? That is also permissible. This is the more British format, right? So this is uh, the subject, your application number the X for a new gas connection. Dear Thomas, let me write this letter in my mind for you uh, this uh, with reference to your application number this for a new gas connection we are pleased to uh, uh, inform you that our representative will visit your house on x date at atho time to install the new gas connection you are requested to please be at home and extend all cooperation to our representative. Yours sincerely, since they have written Mr. Thomas, yours sincerely or sincerely yours X, Y, Z. So they have said with regards yours sincerely. This is the format of the letter. Now remember that this is all on the left and this is called the full block style, right? Uh, and the date and uh, the signature are very important, right? They have said that with reference to your letter dated is not to be used. You can use it. However, formal letters are not uh, uh, so very uh, touchy about these. You can say I was glad to receive your letter of that, this or we are happy to note, right? Uh, you write thanking you. Thanking you is perfectly acceptable, right? Uh, and then you uh, have this is, for example, the, the letter written to the manager, Him Himachal Tourism, Mall Road, Shimla. It says, Dear Sir, we are planning to spend our vacation in Dharamsala and would like some information uh, regarding availability of lodging in the area. We'd like to have information about inexpensive hotels. And then the purpose of the letter, could you please send me a copy of the city map and so on and so forth. Right. Now, this is a job application, right? This is a job application to with reference to this particular ad, right? So uh, we'll talk about the curriculum vita later on, but your name and address, this can also come 
underneath, beneath, when you finish the letter. But uh, this is a sample. It can come also on top. The date is written to the manager. Dear sir, I would like to apply for the post of this that you have advertised in the Hindu. I have just complete. So you state very briefly about me. I have just completed my uh, postgraduate degree in English, say, for example, from Vishwabharati Shantiniketan. Uh, if selected, this would be my first job. I am sincere, honest, and hardworking. You can write this, or you can say, if selected, if given an opportunity, I will try to live up to your expectations. Right. And then say, if you are attaching, I am attaching or I am enclosing my resume and look forward to meeting you and look forward to meeting you. That is fine. Regards yours truly. You see, because this is dear sir, they have signed off as yours truly. Right. So this is the structure and the details of the formal letter. Remember, therefore, that you have to start off with the date, then the address, right, to the, uh, say, the manager, State Bank of India, Bolpur branch or Shantiniketan branch. Dear sir, subject closure of account. This is to inform you from the left that I hold an, a savings branch savings bank account number X with your bank. Since I have moved to Kolkata, next line, I would like to close the account and refund, uh, close the account. I would request you to do the same and uh, deposit the entire money to my account number X at Kolkata State Bank of India branch. I look forward to your kind, necessary action. Thanking you since you've written, dear sir, yours truly, X, Y, Z. And underneath, you can provide your complete address. Your complete address can also be provided right at the top. Right. So this is the structure of the formal letter and the formal email. Right. So that is where what I wanted to share with you. Now, let me return back to the meet and take uh, your classes. I can see a lot of you have put on your microphones. Please switch them all, uh, switch them off and uh, we can take your questions one by one. Right. Any questions? Tomorrow, we'll discuss how to write a curriculum vita or a, or a detailed resume. But today, I just wanted you to have a look at the email. Sir. And yeah, just just give me a minute. I will just show you the uh, uh, the the I'm sorry. Just give me a minute. Uh, just give me a minute. OK, 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 go ahead. If you understood, no problems. I don't have to show you that. Right. Bolo. What book should we uh, purchase for email class? Look, you have three things here. What is communication? Right. And what are the different kinds of communication which we have discussed? Writing a business letter, which once again, I am going to uh, sort of, uh, I have given you in the, in the lecture, uh, how to write a, a CV and comprehension. For this, any grammar book will do. But most important of all is to please take a look at these classes over and over again. Whatever I have taught, I will ask from that. I will depend on no book. So there's no specific book that I want to recommend here. Right? Yes, Ustara, sir. I am I am noting all the things what you were teaching. Right. But if you really want to want to have a have a look at any particular book, take a look at any book on communication. I don't mind you. Uh, you can take a look at any any uh, uh, for that matter any uh, any particular uh, website as well because these are very 
common things. These are not some things which you need a particular book for. Hmm? Right. Okay, sir. Right. Any other questions about, you know, you see, I, I don't want to talk much about uh, the letter, business letter. These are letters you have practiced throughout your, uh, all your uh, entire uh, school life. Uh, but uh, since we have it in the syllabus and the email thing is slightly new to you, I have uh, given you this idea about when a uh, blind carbon copy is to be used. Uh, by the way, I'm just once again uh, putting on the chat box uh, the, the website which, uh, which contains the, e the YouTube link where you can find the copy of the lecture today. Aditi has asked me in the uh, in, in case of letters addressed to the police, the same format you will be used. Yes, absolutely. Now, when you write a letter to the police, when you go to a police station, you either file an FIR or you file a general diary. When you are filing a general diary, the subject matter will be general diary against X, Mr. X or general diary about the loss of identity card. And you write, dear sir, so the officer in charge this police station, uh, this is to inform you that I have lost my identity card while traveling in the Shantiniketan area. I would like to file a general diary for the same, right? And you, uh, you say, thanking you, yours truly, and so on and so forth. They will receive you and that GD uh, will be used for getting the SIM or whatever or the identity card. But if you are specifically wanting to file an FIR against someone, then you will have to provide the details. You will probably say, dear sir, this is to, uh, file, a, uh, this is to file a first information report against Mr. X or unknown persons who were harassing me while I was traveling on the road on this and that date. Uh, my house is here and I was traveling on this date from X place to Y place where three boys riding on motorcycles were chasing me and passing uh, ungenerous comments. Uh, I could not note down the number of the bikes, but I would request you to carry on a proper investigation and uh, provide me uh, with some protection or provide the other uh, students with the same protection in this particular area. Thanking you, yours truly. Right. Okay, so this is the same format that you will have to use. Okay, right. Shobik Haldar has said, Sir, when we are writing a formal letter to the teacher, are we going to address the teacher as respected sir or dear sir? You see, uh, you have to understand, Shobik, this is a good question, that in, uh, say, India, we treat the teacher as a guru. So we say, yes, respected sir is fine, no problem. So when you write to your principal, your head of the department, your teacher, your vice chancellor, respected sir is fine. We also often write this to our senior teachers. But remember that in the UK or in the US, people call their professors by name. So if I was teaching you in the US, you would not have said, sir, you would just have said, dear Omrit, or you can say, dear Omrit Da. This is also a good thing about Shantini Ketan that you can address your professors as Da, uh, as Da or the whatever you want to. But yes, in India, respected sir is fine. Right. But the general salutation is dear sir. Globally, when you write to uh, uh, the, the teacher, you write dear sir, not respected sir. But in India, you can use this format. Right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Now, this many of you are very worried about the book and the exams. Now, these are not very difficult topics. The only difficult topic that you really have in this paper is to write the, uh, to the answers on communication, which I have therefore put on the slides for you to take. Uh, you can take the photographs. You can look at them, make notes. The CV part, well, I will give you two detailed CVs so that you can take a look at how 
general CVs are done and how professional CVs are done, right? Okay, so that is by uh, that is tomorrow. That is not today. So uh, tomorrow, what we will discuss is how an initial CV will look like for you, and the other is how a professional CV, say ten years down the line when you have some experience, will look like. That is at ten thirty tomorrow. Any any other questions? But please remember the G, the email. You know the uh the you send the mail to somebody to you want to copy cc and you want to copy this to someone without the others knowing it is bcc and when you write an email please remember to write not enclosed but attached because you attach things on an email right but then you've been writing emails one too many nowadays so uh, i i guess all of you already know about this any other questions no then thank you for attending this class i am putting this up very shortly on uh, the youtube channel uh, for you to follow once again just a reminder dear sir yours truly dear professor sen yours sincerely or sincerely yours the salutation and the signing off very important right okay topu if you have any instructions to them okay no tomorrow we shall meet once again right 10:30 okay uh, yes okay. sir in case of email do we do we have to give designation when our designation if we are a student maybe no you can if you want to pass on this information otherwise you do not need to pass on the uh, designation Right. Okay, say, you. say if you were writing to the principal asking for, say, a Konnashri uh, Prokolpo uh, certificate, then of course you will have to give your specific information, your department, your roll number, and so on and so forth. Right? Or say you are writing to the examination section, you are stating a problem that you have not received a certificate, then you have to obviously give your designation uh, there, right? In the information. Okay, sir. Thank you. Right. Okay, then. Thank you. I will stop recording here. Uh, thank you for having attended.